What's going on, compadres? I'm Brandon Tolbert, and today we're talking petroleum engineering. Drainage area and well spacing. Yeah, it's a big deal. You put two wells too close together, they interfere with each other. You put them too far apart, you lose out on some reserves. It's a juggling act. Nobody gets it perfect, but it's a big deal in the industry, optimizing well spacing. So to understand well spacing, you have to know how to calculate drainage area. So today, I'm gonna to go through a fundamental example of calculating drainage area using production data from a well, and also using correlations to estimate those properties we don't know. Because unfortunately, oil and gas, if you work in that industry, you don't get all the data you want. Fortunately, we have correlations to make estimations of some fluid properties that uh, we can use to continue our analysis and get approximate results. So guys, get ready, let's go. So let's get into it. So today I'm gonna to walk through a step-by-step -step procedure to determine the drainage area of a horizontal well assuming a solution gas drive reservoir. We're gonna use a well from the Wolf Camp play in New Mexico. So in New Mexico, this Wolf Camp basin is basically a limestone formation and it's got horizontal wells that they run through it to extract oil and gas. And so some key concepts I wanted to want you to focus on as we go through this is material balance. So we're going to apply material balance to an undersaturated reservoir, solution gas oil reservoir that is. We're also going to look at the volumetric method to calculate original oil in place. And then we're going to look into some fluid correlations to estimate some fluid properties. And also we're going to use some rules of thumb to determine other th things like temperature and pressure when we don't have data. And so if you can see here to the left, if you didn't know what drainage area was, it's basically the area that the well drains. And so this is the top view of this horizontal well. And here's the boundaries that it drains. And this area can be any arbitrary shape. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. Uh, it can be an ellipse. It can be cylindrical. Uh, it's up to the reservoir engineer what they want to do there. So before we get into it, let's lay out some assumptions. So we're basically assuming we have a known initial reservoir pressure. Um, a lot of times drilling engineers, when they drill the well, they're gonna put in mud and they know how much mud they put in because they have to prevent formation fluids from coming to surface. And so they'll actually know the shut-in pressure or the initial pressure. That's one thing you'll get. Um, usually you won't get anything after that unless your company is generous and they want to spend money and do some research, but that's not likely. Also, because we're s assuming solution gas res drive reservoir, which is may not fit our well, we're assuming no gas cap, no water influx, a constant GOR above the bubble point. So as you can see here, um, that's an important assumption. This is solution gas oil ratio on the y-axis and reservoir pressure on the x-axis uh, for solution gas drive reservoir that gas oil ratio is constant until it hits the bubble point and that's an important uh, simplifying assumption so we'll be looking at this region and we'll want to estimate our solution gas oil ratio here and then we're also going to take into account water and formation compressibilities so step one is to determine the bubble point pressure and you're usually you can get that from lab data but that's not convenient for a lot of people. So you can estimate it with the standing correlation. It's a real good correlation to estimate bubble point pressure. And if you didn't know what bubble point pressure was, we can look at this phase diagram. This basically is a phase diagram for a oil reservoir. The reservoir pressure, you start ab above this two phase region. And as you decline and you hit the bubble point, this is the pressure at which the first molecules of gas evolve out of solution. And so these are the two pressures we want. And uh, you have to go find those and estimate this with a correlation. Step number two, we want to determine the recovery factor up to the bubble point using material balance. And so this is the material balance for a solution gas dry reservoir. It, you have a long equation, uh, material balance equation. We reduced it to this. So basically you have the production what you're looking for is the recovery factor. So you want the production up to the bubble point over the original oil in place. And then you have 
to find these fluid properties such as formation volume factor. This is the formation volume factor at initial reservoir pressure and the formation volume factor at bubble point. You have all these other parameters you need and so you may have to apply some correlations to find these if you don't have lab data and we'll step into that in our VVA code. And then like for instance your cumulative production up to the bubble point you can determine from production data. And so this is production data of that well we're looking at in the Wolf Camp Basin. And you can see here, we're not we're gonna cover this in another video, but you can see that you have points right here of cumulative oil production versus cumulative gas production. You go up and then you hit a deflection point. And so this deflection right here where it changes course is defined usually defined as the bubble point. Uh, pressure this so this is the cumulative production up to the bubble point pressure and we can find this from production data and also we can determine our solution gas oil ratio at bubble point pressure by just looking at this these constant lines or picking one of these points we'll go into that later and so step number three to determine drainage area before we want to go determine the original one place for material balance so we determine the recovery factor in step two and also we determine the production cumulative oil production up to the bubble point in step two we take the ratio of those two and we end up with our original oil in place so uh, there we have it next we want to de step four we want to determine original oil in place per acre from volumetric calculations so this is what geologists do and reservoir engineers do um, you can find this ratio simply by um, applying this equation. This is a conversion factor, this is water saturation, this is porosity, this is net pay thickness. Just remember that this is net pay thickness, not the, the entire height. Um, and this is the formation volume factor at initial reservoir pressure. And you can see here um, you found original oil in place for material balance and you found original oil in place per acre from the volumetric calculation. Now you can just take these two and uh, take the quotient and divide each by each other and you can get acres and that's what you do in step five. You determine the drainage area of the well by combining the material balance interpretation and the volumetric interpretation and you end up with drainage area. So guys, those are the five key steps we're going to go through in our VBA code. So let's get started on that because that's, that's going to be a, a big piece of this. So here is the spreadsheet to estimate drainage area of this well. So we're looking at the well with this API number located in the Wolf Camp Carbonate Play in New Mexico. It's a horizontal well. Before we get started, I want to show you some things that you do beforehand. Um, before you even start this calculation. So anything with a white cell here is, is data from the actual well. So we have TVD, the fluid API, the gas gravity, specific gravity, and anything in, in um, anything with a red border is something I didn't have, so we have to estimate with a correlation and um, also anything boxed in blue we have to get from production data so we needed a couple of these things before we got started we needed the solution gas oil ratio above the bubble point so we got that from production data i'll show that in another video we also got the cumulative production up to the bubble point from production data so anything in shaded in green is going to be calculated from fundamental petroleum engineering equations and so um, before we get into it, let me show you the VBA code that has these equations. So this has a long list of all those correlations that were required to do this analysis to determine drainage area. I mean, it's a long list. You definitely can mull through this and, and look at it. I'll touch a few of them um, just to, to give you some background. So uh, this is a the standing correlation to estimate bubble point pressure. And uh, also we have correlations to estimate formation volume factors above and below the bubble point. And we also have compressibility equations to estimate formation compressibility, oil compressibility, and um, also 
uh, like for instance, this is a formation compressibility equation uh, t for sandstones, and this is a formation compressibility for limestones. We'll be using this equation because we're dealing with carbonates, and this is the recovery factor up to the bubble point that we had in the slide presentation in step two. This is that equation right here. And so um, we have these other ones that we showed in the slide, our volumetric equation. Um, so we have a temperature correlation. So that gives you a little bit of background. Definitely, um, I'm not going to cover everything, but this is what we're going to use for this analysis. So I knew how deep the well was, but I didn't know the temperature. I, I couldn't find a temperature, so since I didn't have that, I'm going to apply a rule of thumb to estimate temperature at reservoir conditions. Uh, so this is uses a correlation uh, or a rule of thumb that uh, petroleum engineers would be familiar with. And so that's the VBA function, temperature correlation, and it takes the TVD, and bang, there I have it. I have a way to estimate temperature at reservoir conditions. And so um, this area, I didn't have an initial reservoir pr pressure. I couldn't find it. Uh, the company would have it. But in West Texas, this is the general pressure gradient they use to estimate reservoir pressure. So I'm going to use that. We have some fluid properties, such as the API of the oil that I was able to find, and also the gas-specific gravity. And so now we need to determine the initial reservoir pressure. So in order to do that, we just take the pressure gradient, which is going to be 0.433 psi per foot, and we multiply it by the depth of the well at TVD. So that's our initial reservoir pressure. The next thing we need is bubble point pressure, and I estimate this with the standing correlation. So if I go into my VBA function, standing at the bubble point, it takes several parameters, like the solution gas oil ratio, at the bubble point and also the specific gravity of the gas temperature which we determined oil API right there and so we get an estimate of the bubble point pressure right there and now we have to go calculate compressibilities. So the oil compressibility can be estimated with the Vasquez-Beggs correlation. And so if I do that, um, it takes the, the pressure at which you're evaluating that. So compressibility in general, it changes with pressure. And so you're going to have to evaluate that at the initial reservoir pressure and bubble point conditions. And so um, that's going to be, we're doing the one for the initial reservoir pressure right here and it requires these values we put these in oil api gas gravity and so we get an estimate of oil compressibility and now we can find the oil compressi compressibility at the bubble point using the same equation and so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to lock these cells and i'm just going to drag it over So if I drag this over, I get my oil compressibility at the bubble point pressure. And because oil compressibility varies with pressure, you can use either of these values to perform your calculation, but I like to use the average of them. That's just me. Uh, it varies with, with whoever your does the calculation. I like to use the average of these compressibilities in my other equations. So. Um, that's just me. Now we estimate the form another parameter we need is formation volume factor at the initial reservoir pressure and bubble point and so I'm going to estimate that with this VBA function so this is going to be the formation volume factor for pressures above the bubble point and actually as a matter of fact I have to estimate this one first because that required the formation volume factor at the bubble point. So let's do that. And so BO at the bubble point, not ba body odor, but formation volume factor. This is the correlation I'm going to use. So it requires solution gas oil ratio at the bubble point, the temperature, oil API, 
gas gravity, bang. So that's our estimate of formation volume factor at the bubble point. Now we can determine our formation volume factor at initial reservoir pressure. So I'm going to apply this correlation. And it requires our bubble formation volume factor at the bubble point. Our compressibility, I'm going to use the initial reservoir compressibility because that's the pressure we're evaluating it at. And also bubble point pressure and then the reservoir pressure. And so that's the value that we get. And so um, here's some values. The next step is to go down. We have our porosity gas saturation is zero because it's solution gas oil ratio with no gas cap. Water saturation, that's a value that I use, 25%. That's a good estimate. Our oil saturation is going to be 75%. And so now we have to estimate our formation compressibility. And so this, because we're dealing with a limestone play, we want to use a correlation for limestone. And so the correlation for limestone is going to be um, this VBA function right here the Newman for LS, which is short for Newman Limestone. So it just re requires porosity to estimate this. So bang, we have porosity. We have our estimate. Wow. We didn't have to go dig that out of a lab report. Thank God. Now we have water compressibility. This is a good value to use. You can find this value in Dake's textbook. He uses this value a lot. Uh, so I use that too. And now our oil compressibility, this is where I use my average of the initial reservoir pressure and bubble point pressure compressibilities. So I'll set this equal to the average of those two. And now we need our total compressibility and this is just an equation um, that uh, you'll find uh, on the internet. Uh, it's basically it takes your oil, gas, water saturations, and your compressibilities um, and determines a total formation compressibility which is what you'll use in your calculations. So oil saturation is 75%, oil compressibility is this value, this is our average, this is our gas uh, saturation which is zero since we don't have any gas and then compressibility for gas is going to be we don't have any so zero our water saturation right here and then water compressibility and then our formation compressibility so these are we end up with our total compressibility which is what we will apply to our material balance equation so this is where our material balance equation comes into play this is the the equation on slide or in step two in the slides so we call that PB the uh, recovery factor at the bubble point and so it takes several values total formation compress or total compressibility oil saturation our formation volume factors at initial reservoir pressure formation volume factor at bubble point and then our initial reservoir pressure and we have a couple right here bubble point pressure and so bang and so um, the next step estimate original oil in place and so basically that's just going to be equal to our cumulative production up to the bubble point divided by the recovery factor at the bubble point and that's our original oil in place and now this is our net pay thickness um, this isn't our entire zone it's our net pay so wherever the oil is flowing out of keep that in mind don't if you go look at a log and you put the entire perf zone thickness, it may not be right. You gotta consider the pay thickness. Remember that. And so now our volumetric calculation of to get original oil in place per acre is gonna be um, this VBA function right here. And so I think this was step four. And um, so this requires our our height of a reservoir net pay thickness, porosity, water saturation, 
and the formation volume factor at initial reservoir pressure. So that's the value that we get right there. So now we can determine the drainage area. This is step five in the slides. So we had basically this is step three, this is step four, and this is step five. So we just take our material balance original in place and divide it by the original in place per acre and we get acres. So that's our average drainage area of our wells. That's it guys. We determined it. Of this well, this well is draining 231 acres if we think all these values are right. And so um, another thing you may want to look at is uh, usually we deal with 640 acre sections when we drill wells and so how many wells can we drill or how many wells do we want to put in that area um, now that we know drainage area well we just simply take the section and we divide it by the drainage area of the well assuming all the others will drain the same area and so it's telling us we need to drill a little we need to drill approximately three wells to drain this entire area if, uh, this entire section if our analysis is is right if we like these values and so um, like I said this is you'll learn this from experience um, basically what values you need to adjust to get it to uh, I guess um, a result that you're comfortable with and so maybe I think these formation volume factors are too high so maybe I just want to change the initial solution gas oil ratio um, maybe I didn't estimate that correct and so see how it changes the values now we have to draw 11 wells uh, 12 wells to drain this entire area so basically um, that's it guys that's that's how you these are all the parameters you need uh, to fill out to estimate the drainage area of a well so this is what we wanted and that's what we got and so um, you can go change these parameters where you need to and um, play with it because if you play with this you'll kind of understand how each variable affects the drainage area of the well and that's pretty cool to see and so guys um, that was pretty quick if you have any questions just let me know or pause the video and go back and, and look at this and work through it and look at the VBA code go understand that a lot of my correlations came from Hawkins book on, patro on petroleum reservoir engineering and also uh, computer assisted approach to petroleum engineering that was another book where I got these correlations from but I'll post them online that way you guys can access it and I'll try to post this spreadsheet so y'all can play with these numbers but that's it guys uh, using fundamental equations and correlations uh, we didn't know everything but we were able to fill in the gaps with correlations and estimate drainage area with fundamental equations so guys that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. There we have it, guys. We were able to estimate the drainage area of a well using production data and correlations to estimate parameters we didn't have. As you can tell, there's a lot of uncertainty in this type of analysis, but we were able to get it done by leveraging correlations and on fluid properties and formation compressibilities. So, guys, this is the ideal situation and by no means does this method fit that well in fact it won't but you can use it as a first order analysis to kind of get in the ballpark of what to expect and if you're comfortable with the results go with it if you're not well reach out for more data or make a more complicated model with parameters that that you think need to go into it but this was a fundamental example and I hope you guys understood what I was doing, understood the concepts that I walked through. And uh, you guys, you rest up, and I'll catch you in the next video. Adios.